from one species of bird, the common ancestor, hummingbirds with beaks of different lengths evolve over many generations. And if these populations change so much that they can no longer reproduce with one another, they are considered separate species on the tree of life. Smith and Snyder want to see how closely related the highland birds are to the birds they examined in the lowland rainforest. Again, is that right? They compare color, beak length, wingspan, just as Darwin would have done. But they have another tool that Darwin never even dreamed of. Okay, that should be funny. DNA. Darwin was convinced that traits were passed on from generation to generation, but he didn't understand how. We now know that the sequence of the four chemical building blocks of DNA determines the traits of all living things. Each generation passes on this text of A's, T's, C's and G's to its offspring. But occasional mistakes in copying, mutations, can result in new traits. By comparing DNA, we can determine who's most closely related to whom. We can determine when they had a common ancestor, when they diverged from that common ancestor. Laboratory analysis reveals that DNA from the rainforest hummingbirds differs only very slightly from that of the highland hummingbirds. They must have diverged from a common ancestor relatively recently in the history of life on Earth, about three million years ago. We're examining the genetic material that makes organisms what they are. And written in that DNA is the history of their evolution. The fact that the blueprints for all living things are in the same language the genetic code of DNA is powerful evidence that they all evolved on a single tree of life. How is it that organisms that are so different can be related? That we are related to a flatworm or a bacteria? Darwin emphasized that small changes would accrue every generation and these changes could build up to amount to enormous changes. It's not really hard to understand how major transitions could come about given that life has been around for three and a half billion years. Darwin really had it right. Remarkably good shot. <laughs> Hello, Parker. Miss Wedgwood. You've met my cousin, Mr. Darwin, before. Sir. He's fast, eh? Fastest in the county. You breed him yourself? I mated him with a bitch who was pretty swift. And how would you breed a fellow like Squib here? From the runts, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> how dare you? Squib is quite as nice as any of your rotten dogs. It's true. It's from the runts and monsters that breeders can produce tailless cats. Or pygmies, like squib. I'm not listening to any more of this. Take me back to the house at once and stop saying horrid things. From wolves to greyhounds. From bulldogs to fellows like squib. In what? A matter of a few hundred years. I take it you don't find talk of dogs all that interesting. I can think of more interesting topics of conversation. Such as? The novels of Miss Austen. And what did she have to say about selective breeding? <laughs> Nothing, as I recall. Ah, that's a great pity. Why shouldn't nature produce such differences? These different breeds of dog? Why should it? What would be the point? Survival. In nature, a little poppet like Squib, who was the smallest in her litter, would die. You nearly did die, didn't you? Yes, that's true, but what about the one with a little more vigour? Or a head start? Because of some peculiarity? Such as? 
A puppy. Born with an extra thick coat in a hot climate would be a monstrosity. But in a cold climate, that would be a good adaptation. That puppy would have an advantage. Got you. Charles. Emma. Let me go. Not until you've paid the top. Which is? A kiss. For me, rather than the dog. You can make a big dog or a small dog, but you can't produce feathers on a dog. Nor can you create organs as miraculous as the heart and the eyes. That can only be the work of God. Hurry up. It's these blasted ties. Marry? Not marry. Marry children, if it please God. Give me that. It's private. It's nonsense. I'm your brother. You've no secrets from me. Yes, I do. I have secrets from everybody. Give it to me. Uh, thank you, Garmin. Constant companion and friend in old age. Yes. Uh, Object to be loved and played with better than a dog anyhow. <laughs> You old romantic. Well, it's intolerable to think of oneself spending one's life like a new to be, working, working, working. And all this is a response to your trip to Cousin Emma's? Not necessarily. Well, you don't know anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. Your collection won't be complete without that most interesting specimen in the whole series of vertebrate mammals. And why haven't you married, if it's such an enviable state? Oh, I'm too lazy to take on anything requiring as much effort as a wife and family. But you're the marrying kind. Cabbage, sprout, cauliflower, all bred from the same ancestor. Cabbage, the leaves, sprouts, the side buds, cauliflower, the flower head, all monstrously enlarged. Sitting opposite me is that strange creature, Homo thesis. Half man, half theory. A word of advice. In my entire life, I have known only three women who were skeptics, and two of them were not permitted in polite society. Keep your theory from Emma. It's too late. I told her. Well, sort of. Not a theory. I don't have a theory. Just thought. How did she take it? She asked me to read her favourite part of the New Testament. <laughs> Our Saviour's farewell to his disciples. You see what I mean? I am the vine and ye are the branches. If man abide not in me... Wilberforce's ears have pricked up. If man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men shall gather them, and they shall be cast into the fire, and they are burned. And how is your soul? What? Your fish. Mm. Delicious. I understand your carriage was stoned on the way here tonight. Well, they're meeting the threat on the streets head on. Yes. Mm, we're drilling with the Honourable Artillery Company. Gentlemen volunteers. In the event of riots, we will back the police. Every man, as long as he obeys the law of the land, should be free to pursue his own interests in his own way. Yes, of course. <laughs> Charge what he likes for bread or anything else for that matter. Is he fair? Let individuals compete and struggle for their advantages. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> 